Hi guys, I'm Ashley and welcome to day 10 of my 10 days of January where I have been posting a new video every single day for the first 10 days of the new year. For the final one, we have a biggie. This is going to be my entire owned TBR. I hope you appreciate this video because I'm destroying my shelves to do this. <laughs> I do log them all on Goodreads, everything on my want to read list over there, all books that I own. Because if they're on my TBR but I don't own them yet, then I keep track of them on an Amazon wish list. Obviously some of the books on this list will be taken off it pretty soon because I read constantly, so you will hopefully be seeing some of these in my January wrap up, but for now, they're on this list and we're gonna go through it. So because I organise my bookshelves via genre, I will be doing this in genre order. And I'm going to be starting with the classics, which I thought was going to be my biggest category, but it's really not. But when I say classics, this does not include any of the ancient Greek plays and things I have. That has its own section now. So let's get started. The Murders in the Rue Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe. The Female Coyote by Charlotte Lennox. Love and Friendship by Jane Austen. The Sonnets and A Lover's Complain by William Shakespeare, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, Don Quixote by Cervantes, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, White Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys, which is more of a modern classic, <laughs> Where Angels Fear to Tread by E.M. Forster, Dracula by Bram Stoker, and The Tenants of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Moving on to non-fiction, we have Literature and Evil by George Bataille, The Silk Road by Peter Frankopan, The Rise and Fall of Ancient Egypt by Toby Wilkinson, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, Girl Squads by Sam Maggs, Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri, The Five by Halle Rubenhold, A Woman Like Her by Sanam Meher, Can We All Be Feminists, edited by June Eric Udori, Three Women by Lisa Taddeo, and Black Tudors by Miranda Kaufman. Just to quickly mention a couple which don't really have a category, they're just kind of there. The Twelve Strange Days of Christmas by Sid Moore, and Spirits of the Season, edited by Tanya Kirk. On to literary and contemporary fiction. A whole bunch of these are for university. All books that I accumulated quite a while ago and just haven't really felt the need to pick them up anytime soon, but I am somewhat interested in and so they're still here. <laughs> Small Island by Andrea Levy. 1004 by Ben Lerner. Hours of the Streets by Sanjeev Sahota. The Power Book by Jeanette Winterson. Saturday by Ian McEwan. The Buried Giant by Kazuri Shiguru. A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ezeki. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Washington Black by Ezzy Adugian. Bellwether by Susanna Kearsley, The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Maria Crowhurst, The House of Spirits by Isabella Lender, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel, The Colour Purple by Alice Walker, The Watcher in the Shadows, The Angel's Game, and The Prisoner of Heaven by Colossary Zaphon. Moving on to ancient Greek mythology, I do have four non-fictions I think it is, and then we go on to ancient Greek plays and this is where my pronunciations may be wrong slightly because if I've not read them yet then I've not quite looked up how to pronounce things yet so bear with me with that. <laughs> the Classical World, An Epic History of Greece and Rome by Robin Lane Fox, Magic in Ancient Greece and Rome by Lindsay C. Watson, Tracking Classical Monsters in Popular Culture by Liz Gloyne, The Medusa Reader edited by Marjorie Garba and Nancy Vickers, The Homeric Hymns, The Constellation Myths, Theogony and Works and Days by Hesiod, Daphnis and Chloe by Longus, Lysistrata and Other Plays by Aristophanes, Medea and Other Plays by Euripides, The Aristea by Aeschylus, and Electra and Other Plays by Sophocles. On to folklore and fairy tale collections, we have A Celtic Miscellany, Scottish Folk and Fairy Tales from Burns to Buchan, Over Nine Waves, A Book of Irish Legends by Marie Heaney, The Mabinogian, Indian Myths edited by Jake Jackson, Specimens of Bushman Folklore, a Treasury of British Folklore by Dee Dee Cheney, Chinese Fairy Tales and Legends by Richard Wilhelm and Frederick Martins, Le Mort d'Arthur, otherwise known as King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by Sir Thomas Mallory, and A Treasury of Irish Fairy and Folk Tales. Now onto a few shelves that I don't really have too many books of, so these genres will be sped through quite quickly, but for children's and middle grade, I have Tunnel of Bones, and The Dark Vault, which is a bind-up of The Archived and The Unbound by Victoria Schwab, The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson, and a couple that I'm just going to throw in here because I don't know where else to put them. I also have The Creature Vault and also A History of Magic. Onto a shelf that I can only categorise as dark books, so this includes horror, thriller, and dark academia style books, An Inheritance of the Finger Post by Ian Pierce, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, and Misery by Stephen King. And then we move on to sci-fi, and there's kind of a theme with this one besides the first book. <laughs> Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, Lifelike and Deviate by Jay Kristoff, Gemina, Obsidio, and Aurora Rising, all by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. 
a lot of J. Christophe. <laughs> so then we're left with fantasy, which is by far my biggest genre. I have split them into young adult fantasy and adult fantasy. Adult fantasy is by far my biggest genre, so I'll save that till last, but heading into young adult fantasy, we have Kingdom of Ash and A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mars, The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White, The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Dimmeline, the Sisters Grimm by Men of Ram Prague, We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal, A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libra Bray, Daughters of Nuri by Rene K. Mayo, We Are Blood and Thunder by Kezia Lupo, Aragon by Christopher Paulini, and The Graces by Law Reeve. I do have a couple of subsections for the rest of the fantasy books on my shelves, one of them being Greek mythology and the other one being hardback books, which might be a mix of young adult fantasy and adult fantasy. So for the Greek myth retellings, I only have a few that I haven't read, those being Song of Sacrifice by Janelle Rhiannon, the King Must Die by Mary Renault, Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill, Medea by Krista Wolf, and Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters by Emily Robertson. For hardback fantasy, I have Fireborn by Rosaria Munda, The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, Nottingham by Nathan McCarrick, The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron, Stone Dancer, and Kinslayer by Jay Kristoff. And then for the rest of the fantasy books, we have The Earth Sea Quartet by Ursula Le Guin, The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch, Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft, Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, The Magicians by Lev Grossman, Son of the Shadows, and Dreamer's Pool by Juliet Marillier, Knight's Daughter by Marine Zimmer Bradley, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin, The Diviners by Libba Bray, The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky, The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, The Invasion of the Tailing and The Fate of the Tailing by Erica Johansson, The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb, The Fifth Season, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers and The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. So those are all the books that I currently own that are still on my TBR. I feel like it's an all right amount. It might seem like a hell of a lot to some people, but I know a lot of people who have a lot more than that. And I also just like having the choice. I don't like the thought of being limited in my choices. And I love looking at my bookshelves and seeing so many books that I'm excited for, so yeah. <laughs> Let me know which books I should prioritise if you've seen any of your favourites on here or any that I really, really need to read because... I, d I don't know. I'm excited for all of them, obviously, so I don't know how to prioritise them. <laughs> but that marks the end of my 10 days of January. But don't worry, because I will, of course, be back soon. I mean, I'll be back on Monday. And I think I'll be posting three videos a week up until the end of January. So there's still going to be plenty of content from me. You're definitely not going to miss anything. But I hope you've enjoyed the 10 days. I really enjoyed doing it, as chaotic as it is. Now I can chill for a bit, since I don't have to make videos literally every single day. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that. Down in the description box, you'll find links to all of my social media and other bookish content as well. So go and have a look down there if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.